Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're having a good day. I'm back with part two of how to hyperlapse, but this time I'll focus on photography. If you haven't seen the first part, be sure to check that out. There is a link at the top right corner of your screen, or there's a link in the description below. Now there are two reasons why I prefer photography for hyperlapse. The first one is because there's more time that passes through. With video, you normally get about two minutes and you speed that up in post. But with the scene that you just saw, it took me one hour to capture the entire footage. And the second reason is that you're shooting in raw images with higher resolution. So you have much more room for editing in post. So I'll start with how I shot the footage. I'll bring up the first image. Okay, so the next step is to pick a part of the building where I need to lock onto. And for me, I'll just zoom in a bit. I chose the middle part here. And so while I'm taking pictures and moving, I'm still locked onto this middle part here. And now I'll bring up my map and show you the route I took when I shot the images. So basically, this is where I started, at the top of the blue line and ended here. The black lines represent the places I took the images. And you can see it's all in one spot. That's the part I chose to lock onto. Now this only shows a few spots where I took the picture, but like I mentioned before, it took me one hour and 240 pictures to get the footage. Normally when you're doing a time lapse or hyperlapse with photos, you want to shoot in manual settings. Because if you're using any of these semi automatic settings, it results in flickering because your camera is adjusting the exposures. But there is an exception and that's when you're shooting a sunset or a sunrise footage. Because no matter what light is changing, either from going dark or getting lighter. So since this was a sunset footage, I did choose one of these semi-automatic settings, the aperture priority. What I did was I set my aperture and my ISO and I let my camera change the shutter speed. I also shot this with a monopod to help me stabilize each picture because as you know, as it gets darker, the shutter will stay open longer. So you might get blurry shots, but with a monopod that really helps out. Now what I would do is take a picture after three steps until the very end. So after shooting, what I do is import it into Lightroom and do some adjustments. So after I made some adjustments to all the images, I will export all the images into a file sequence. So basically you got to number it from 1 through 240 pictures. So this way, After Effects and DaVinci Resolve, they, it knows that it's a image sequence when you import it to their application. Okay, so now we'll start with After Effects. We'll close Lightroom because we don't need that anymore. Now you want to import all those images. Go to File, Import, File. And you locate it wherever you save the image sequence and you just click the first one and it automatically knows that it's, that it's a sequence here and import. You've got all the information here, the size of the images, 30 frames per second, it's eight seconds long and you've got one 240 pictures. Now what you want to do is make a new composition. Drag this down here for new comp. And we're going to change the composition actually. So you right click composition settings and we're going to do a 1080p footage. So you click on this part here and you go to HDTV 1080 at 30 frames per second. Okay, you click OK. So this is the actual image and this is where the footage will be so you have a lot of room to work with here and this is good because we're going to apply warp stabilizer and sometimes warp stabilizer needs to crop in so we'll just adjust it i think we'll even make it a bit bigger so about like that is okay press enter so let's see what the footage looks like before adding anything on i'll warn you it's probably gonna look really really bad 
Yeah, so as you can see, it's not stabilized at all. It's very jumpy and you really can't watch it actually. So what we need to do is apply warp stabilizer to the footage. And here in your effects and presets, you need to type in warp and warp stabilizer. You need to left click, drag it to your footage. So this is what it looks like after applying warp stabilizer. So as you can see, after applying Warp Stabilizer, it does look a lot better, but it is still a bit jumpy. So what we could do is reapply Warp Stabilizer. To do that, you need to click on your composition here, right click, go to Pre-Comp, and make sure Move All Attributes into the new composition is selected. Press OK, and now it's basically a new composition. Go back to your effects and presets, Warp Stabilizer is already selected and just drag it into your composition. Okay, so let's check the footage after we reapplied Warp Stabilizer. So it looks great, it's very steady, but the only thing is it's flickering quite a bit. And unfortunately, I don't have the plugin for a uh, deflickering software. So what we'll do now is we'll use DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so we have DaVinci Resolve open. And now what we need to do is first, we'll check the project settings. And make sure the, t uh, the frame rate and resolution is what you want it to be. So for me, I wanted the 30 frames per second. Okay, now we need to import the image sequence. So just locate wherever you saved it on your computer. Okay, so now I'll go to my edit tab here and drag your footage down to your timeline. If you have these black lines, all you, can, all you need to do is go to inspector, go to real uh, retime and scaling, scaling and stretch. Yes, and so you can see stabilization is here double click and you need to just press stabilize. Yeah, it'll take some time. Usually warp stabilizer or stabilizing in DaVinci takes a few minutes depending on how, how fast your computer is. Okay, so once DaVinci Resolve has finished stabilizing, we just need to add one more effect and that's the deflicker effect. So you go here in your search bar, you type in deflicker. And there it is, you just left click, hold it down and drag it to your footage. And that's it, your footage is not flickering anymore. So now let's check out the footage with the stabilization and the deflicker filter on. So the footage looks great, it's stabilized, there's no flickering going on, and this is actually usable now on a project. Much better than it was in the beginning when it was very jittery and lots of flickering going on. I hope this was helpful for you on how to do a hyperlapse with photography and using both After Effects and DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't seen the first part, be sure to check that out. There is a link in the description below. If you liked the video, hit that like button, and if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.